Hello and welcome to another C++ tutorial. So this time around we are going to be taking a bit of a further look at inheritance and in particular we're going to be taking a look at a couple of things known as abstract classes and interfaces. We're going to be taking a look at how we can actually enforce some rules there so that we can say that a child class has to implement a particular method. I will also take a look at how we can make it possible for a child class to then say nothing actually at a lower level can override this method. So we're going to take a look at a few different things there. So let's dive on in. So as a starting point I'm just going to set up a couple of classes and what I'm going to do is similar to the previous one. Uh, I'm going to create an animal class so we'll just have that set up and then what I am going to do is I am going to create uh, one that inherits off of animal and I am just going to call this dog. So we've got those few ones set up which is good. I'm just going to include my dog class here. So we'd seen Previously, we could set up functionality uh, where we could create something that had that could be overridden in the child class. So, for example, having something like a virtual function perform introduction. So we saw we could set up that we could create an implementation in Animal and then the child class we had the option of overriding that or using the parent version. But say we want to enforce that the child has to implement that. We actually can and we can do that by making this function known as something called a pure virtual. Which a pure virtual function is one where we say okay it's a virtual void and it equals zero. So this is a pure virtual function. So it has no implementation. Marked as virtual. And we have the equals zero. That's how we indicate that this is a pure virtual function. Now one of the things with having a pure virtual function is that now means this class is automatically something known as an abstract class. So if a class has at least one pure virtual function then the class is abstract. Now let's see what that actually means in practice. So with that being an abstract class what that means is say here I go animal and we'll follow the process where we're making sure we're using a pointer here. Say I go and create a new animal and then later down here just so we're making sure we clean up memory I delete it. You'll notice I actually can't. So a pure virtual function making that class abstract, an abstract class cannot be instantiated. So we can never instantiate one. But we can still use them as a variable, as something where we're holding uh, one of those child classes. So although I can't create an animal instance, I could go and create dog. Now we'll notice while it's still showing an error, it's actually a different error. In this case it's telling us that that pure virtual function has not been implemented. And this is sort of the goal of having that set up with uh, having pure virtual functions is so that it enforces a minimum amount of functionality that has to be there on a particular child class. That's the whole point of pure virtual functions. It says here is the bare minimum that a class must have to be a 
valid functioning child class of this parent object. So we actually have to, for our code co to compile, we have to go over here to our dog class and have to actually then implement virtual void, the form introduction. And we again, we make sure we mark this as override. Not strictly necessary, but the reason we do that is because that ensures that this function exists in the parent. It means if we change that function in the parent, the name of it, we'll actually get an error here indicating that we're saying we're trying to override something, but that function can't be found. So while it's not necessary, I really recommend getting in the habit of including it because it means that you're following sort of good practices there. We're making sure our code is safer. So let's implement this function. And we'll just open up the dog class. And what I'm going to do is just a usual setup of including IO stream. And then just output a very basic message like that. What we should find is now this runs happily. And we should see, yep, so nothing happens currently, but if I go animal pointer, perform introduction, and run that, it goes and runs the particular code, which is good. So let's go a little bit further with the abstract class. So, okay, an abstract class we're setting essentially, here is what the uh, child classes need to look like, here is what they need to have. An abstract class can still have data on it though as well. Uh, and there's also nothing stopping us having functions here that aren't pure virtual. So an abstract class isn't restricted to only having pure virtual functions and not having anything else. We can absolutely store data here where that's appropriate. So for example, we could, if I add in here our string, we could actually have a name. So that's perfectly valid for us to have data on here. We can also have a constructor. So we could have a constructor that takes in a name. And we could even give that a default value. So perfectly valid to have constructors, to have data on the base class like this, uh, all down to what's going to be uh, sort of most appropriate for your particular setup. So something like of that, completely valid. Uh, I could have a function here, standard string get name. And I could make this a virtual one so a child class could override it if they want to. Uh, and then because it's such a simple one, I would be inclined to actually put the implementation here. So perfectly valid. We could then, in our actual animal, could be saying, I'm a dog, my name is, get name. So now we should see, okay, it's outputting that. So it's running the constructor of the, the parent class there. So that's good. So, okay, abstract classes, as soon as it has one pure virtual function, it's automatically abstract. But we can still store data, we can have constructors, we can have virtual functions that aren't pure virtual ones that do actually have an implementation. That's entirely valid on it. So really, really handy approach there. So, okay, abstract classes and pure virtual functions that we use in them, they give us a way of setting as said, here's what a fully functioning child class needs to have as a bare minimum. There might be a case though, where we want to have 
a child, you know, because inheritance isn't just, okay, there's a parent and a child class. Inheritance hierarchies can go very, very deep. Uh, so you can have many, 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 many layers uh, of inheritance there. You might hit a point where the implementation of a particular function that's being overridden, you don't want that to be overridden in a child class. So for example, we might set up a function here uh, that, okay, we'll say another pure virtual function, uh, and we'll call this uh, perform farewell. And we might decide that that particular function, we're going to, again, support that here in dog. But when I create a child class based off of this, I don't want those to be able to customize it further. So I can actually put final as a keyword. So final prevents any child class from overriding this function. So while I'll be able to provide an implementation here for that in dog, which I'll just make it say, like of that, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to create a class based off of this. So I'll add in a new class. And this is going to be a beagle. It's going to inherit from dog. And what I'll do is, okay, I'm going to change my code here. So now what it's doing is it's creating a beagle. And we'll have the same setup where it's running the particular things. So we haven't tried to override it yet. We'll see what happens when we do. Code's still working as before, which is what we expected. But if I get here and I try and say virtual void, perform farewell, override, you'll notice I'm immediately getting an error because it's saying that it cannot override it. So we are prevented from customizing that further. So that mix of pure virtual and also final can be really handy for enforcing code safety. This is one of the things with C++. By default, it doesn't give you safety rails. And in particular, if you compare it to something like C Sharp and that, a lot of the safety rails that exist in C Sharp, they're not there by default in C++. But what C++ gives us is it gives us all of the pieces to build the safety rails in our code. And the responsibility kind of ends up being on us to ensure the code is safer. So that's where what we, the things we do with this. So we can use pure virtual functions. Those are a way of saying, here is what must be implemented in a child class. We can use final to say it is no longer safe to override this, so I'm going to prevent that from happening. So two, two things that allow us to make our code a bit safer to provide interfaces that are more predictable. Because the assumption that someone is going to make, and this is an assumption that it is generally should be valid to make, is if where I am inheriting from a particular class, and there is a virtual function in it that is not final, my expectation is it is safe for me to override that. So that's something where that's how we should be designing our classes. Unless it's something that is uh, marked as final or is not, you know, it's something that's not actually able to be overridden, I should assume that I can safely override that. So that comes down to how we design our code. So what if we want to take this a step further and we actually want an entire class not to be able to be overridden? So for example, the beagle 
we might not want that to be able to be overridden any further. So we can actually do that, that same final keyword. I can go and actually here put in final. And now if I go and I'm going to try and add in a new class uh, and for want of a better name, I'm going to call this Beagle version 2. And if I set this as Beagle, now it's going to create the class because it's not doing any extra checks there, but you will notice I actually can't do that because it's been marked as final. So it's possible for us to prevent a class being inherited from these days. So marking a class as final prevents inheritance from it. And that can be an important thing to do. There are some classes that it is just not going to be safe for someone to inherit from and modify. Uh, there are some ones built into the standard library. So things like standard vector and so forth, you generally, uh, they can be incredibly unsafe to inherit from. Uh, they're not designed to be inherited from. So this allows us to, again, provide that safety rail of saying, yep, this class is not valid for it to be inherited from, so I will mark it as final, and then nothing can inherit from it. So making use of tools like of this is really, really important. Uh, it sets those rules for how others folks can work with our code, which keeps our code base safer. So I'm actually going to remove those files because they won't compile. So, okay, we can use pure virtual to say something must be implemented. We can use final on a function to say there's no further overriding of this that's no longer safe. We can also use final on a class to say it is not safe to inherit from this. It gives us a bunch of safety controls, a bunch of ways of managing how things work in our code. There's a couple of other things we can actually do with this idea of abstract classes. So two terms that you potentially hear sort of being talked about and are fairly similar in many ways an abstract class, and an interface. So in c -sharp, they have very specific meanings. C++, they still do have those specific meanings, but it ends up, due to the nature of C++, it's a little bit fuzzier and it's more down to convention. So when we're talking about something called an interface, an interface is going to typically be an abstract class, so it will have pure virtual functions in it. But an interface describes a particular bit of functionality. So whereas an abstract class might be something like animal, so it's something that we inherit from, an interface is describing a type of functionality. So something being able to move, something being able to you know, take damage, something being able to store resources, so have an inventory. Those are the kinds of things that we often use interfaces for. So a way of describing behavior or functionality or a capability. But there's still an abstract class. It's just the organization of them. So let's take our animals. I might want to have all animals be able to uh, support you know, having, having a very basic inventory. So I'm going to create a new class, and generally with interfaces, it's not uncommon to see a naming convention uh, where we always prefix the name with I. So I inventory, and then this, what it might have is, okay, there might be a virtual void add to inventory, and we might have that be a pure virtual. I'm going to include string here. It wouldn't, it wouldn't probably be an actual string, but 
for the purpose of making this an easy type. I'm going to do that. Uh, item name. We might have a setup where you're okay. Get num inventory slots. So different things here where we're defining essentially for something to have an inventory. What is the bare minimum that it must have for that to function? And then on animal, I can go and say, okay, well, that inherits from I inventory. We'll include the particular header for it. Now, okay, I'm going to chuck in a couple of other things as well, because okay, animals, we're going to say they have an inventory. Uh, we're going to also say all animals can move so that there can be an I movable interface. And I movable might have a virtual float get max speed. There could be other ones that we define as well, but just having one is enough. And then in our animal, well, I'm going to include I movable and also say that that is has to be inherited from. So we're saying that our animal class must implement I inventory and it must implement I movable. And what we'll find is we immediately get errors because we don't have those things implemented. So that means we must be implementing them at some point. Now, if we are looking at where best to implement those, could be stuff that we implement here on the animal if it's appropriate to do so. So something like the inventory ones, those would make a level of sense for implementing them here. I would often put in a comment, so implement I, inventory and provide the particular functions here. So we have our different ones. Now I'm just going to put an empty implementation here because we're not too worried about what they specifically do. Uh, actually get on inventory slots that should be returning an integer. So we'll just make sure we've got something there for that. And we'll say 10. So, okay, the interface doesn't have to all be implemented at the same level as well. Something like the inventory, yep, that could be appropriate for implementing at the animal level. But something like iMovable, that actually might be more appropriate to implement at, for example, the dog level because different types of animals move in different ways. So we could potentially have that be here. So we'll implement I movable. And all we'll do is return five. So as long as we've implemented the interface at some point, in the either the Beagle class or its parents, the code will be able to run, it'll be completely happy. It means I can get here and do things like you know, get num inventory slots. So inventory space. So those completely valid. We'll see that it will output our value. So that's good. So interfaces are really, really handy for being able to set the you know, particular capabilities that something might have. We could absolutely set up implementations of some functions here in an interface. Uh, that can absolutely be appropriate. Uh, most of the times with an interface, a lot of the functions are going to be pure virtual ones. Uh, but with an interface, we absolutely still can have implementations for functions, and we can also have data. That's a little less common with an interface, 
Um, generally, you'll find the majority of an interface is pure virtual functions, maybe some implementations, and less common, you'll see some actual uh, variables being stored there. There's nothing preventing it from happening. Uh, it's just usually the use cases of how we work with interfaces that tend to not actually need uh, the variable set up. So, okay, we've seen a few different things here. I just want to recap over the main things that we've looked at. So we've seen this idea of having a pure virtual function, which to make a function be a pure virtual versus a vir virtual one, we do this equals zero, and we don't provide an implementation for it. That's the standard for marking something as pure virtual. As soon as a function in a class is a pure virtual one, so as soon as a class has one or more pure virtual functions, that class is now known as what's called an abstract class. An abstract class cannot be instantiated. We can still use it for holding pointers to or references to a child version of that class, but the class itself cannot be instantiated. With those pure virtual functions, those are our way of saying, here is what a child class must implement to be considered a functional child class of that parent. As well as pure virtual being a way of enforcing that something must be implemented, we also can prevent something from being overridden in a child class. So on a function by function basis, we can mark a function as final when we override it. When we do that, what we're saying is that it's no longer possible to create a child class that overwrites that function, that it's no longer safe to do, and we'll actually get a compiler error if we try. That allows us to prevent it on a function by function basis, but we can also mark a function, a class itself, sorry. But we can also mark a class itself as final, and then it will no longer be possible to inherit from that class. This allows us to ensure safety. So we generally, what we should be able to assume is if a class is not marked as final, it's safe to inherit from it. If a function is not marked as final, it's safe for us to override it. So the final keyword using that takes that from being something where we're making an assumption to being something where the compiler will actually cause an error if someone tries to do that behavior that we're considering to be unsafe with our class at the moment. We also saw a version of an abstract class that we refer to as an interface, where the main difference between an interface versus an abstract class is while all interfaces are an abstract class, not all abstract classes are an interface. An abstract class is something that has a pure virtual function in it. Generally, you know, as we're using in the case with animal, it's something that's defining a larger sort of object that's defining a particular uh, thing that has data, that has it, you know, functions that operate on it. It's something that's performing fairly complex tasks. Whereas an interface is something that it's an abstract class that it's focused on a particular behavior, focused on a particular functionality. So something being able to move, something having inventory, something being able to equip items, something being damageable. So an interface is an abstract class where all of the functionality in that is confined to a particular behavior, a particular feature or task sort of aspect. Um, in, an, in an interface, it's quite common that the majority of things we'll see will be pure virtual functions. We can provide implementations there. Uh, that's something that might be appropriate in some cases, but it also can be less common to see that. Even less common is seeing data stored on an, an interface. That can be done and there may be valid use cases for it, uh, but that tends to be a lot less common. But using this mix of interfaces, of abstract classes, of pure virtual functions that are final, these allow us to set expectations for how others work with our code, which is really valuable. Uh, it enforces sort of that, that code quality, 
it ensures we have safer code there, which is really important. So dive on in and experiment with this. Set up some other interfaces. Experiment with the kinds of things you can do there with an interface in terms of storing data, in terms of storing, like having additional functions, having some things that can and can't be overridden. Dive in and experiment with it. It's the biggest thing I can encourage with when you're working with a new language is don't be afraid of making changes, potentially causing errors. Errors are good. The more you run into errors now, the earlier you learn how to fix them. Uh, because the running into errors is something that never goes away. Uh, so getting used to them, getting used to the process of, okay, how do I track these down? How do I fix them? What does this mean? Those are really valuable and those are really helpful. So do dive in and experiment with the code. Thanks folks, I hope you found the video interesting and helpful. If you're looking for the code for the project, the code is available up on GitHub and there is a link to that in the description below. If you've got any questions, chuck in a comment below. If you are trying to track down other related videos, I do have a searchable video archive and I've put a link to that in the description also. And if you're looking for ways to support the channel, chuck out a like and subscribe, it really helps out, it's really appreciated. And if you're looking for other ways, I do also have a Patreon and there is a link to that in the description as well. But until next time, bye.